Are you a gamer? Are you a collector? Are you a reseller? Or are you a physical media investor? Uh, so, when you collect games, there are a lot of people that don't like you. Unless you're also a gamer. If you real resell games, sometimes a lot of people don't like you. Unless you're a gamer. But what about a physical media investor? So, let's talk about that. Physical media, you know, is dying due to, like, you know, people. I guess copyright, trademark properties, you know, these companies want to keep their licenses and their properties, you know, a tight, they want a tighter grip on it. So you could buy a game, and a lot of times digital is cheaper, and a lot of times digital is more expensive. Sometimes digital doesn't really go down in price very often when you know physical media goes up and down so a physical media investor to me is someone that actually looks for trends in the past and makes investments on physical media usually new sealed and looking at the past trends trying to figure out if this game, this genre of game, this type, this, you know, the brand release, the, um, um, is it a game in a franchise that, you know, always goes up, you know, let's say Pokemon or Fire Emblem or something like that, and making an investment that is long term, hoping that their investment will pay off. So this new type of physical media investor really does not take out anything from the marketplace that, you know, it's, they're usually things that are still in production, um, and if demand, you know, uh, warrants more production, more releases, and to keep everything on the market, it'll stay on the market until you know things get old and new systems come out so there isn't really any reason to hate a physical media investor um, sometimes due to things getting released in masses digitally there are a little you know like limited um, companies that do limited releases and stuff you know, there are a few of them, and they will take a, a game that has been released digitally, get, get you know, a license to reproduce and sell 500 or 1,000 or 5,000 pieces or whatever. And, you know, those things are kind of limited, and they seem to go up, you know, quite a bit as soon as they're taken off the market. But we're not going to just focus on that. We'll, we can focus on any you know, of the big brands, you know, big franchises or anything you want when we're talking about that. So in general, people shouldn't be upset when you do physical media investments. Several years ago, um, I noticed like certain retailers, at least online, would clear their items out. And this is probably during the DS and uh, Xbox 360 and PS3 days so I would purchase some of these clear outs and try to you know sell them on eBay or whatever then I realized you know this might be a really good time to start doing these investments that are long term so sometimes I would you know afterwards uh, invest in games that were still current and in production not being cleared out sometimes you know paying the full retail price for them and occasionally they'd go on sale black friday or anything like that and well i would buy you know a few of them 
some of the games have paid off heavily. Some of the games are, you know, in the realm of the same price as I invested. Some of them went up, you know, just a little bit. Some of them went down a little bit. Um, I mean, if, if you're lucky, you can have like 80% of, of your stock, you know, making money. But, you know, in reality, that probably isn't going to happen. Um, it could be 20% or 36% or whatever if you make the right choices and investments and predictions. So I'm not really an active physical media investor. I do it every once in a while. I, you know, have my list of what I bought, how much I paid for it. And I'll, you know, once or twice a year, I'll compare what the market price is for them. And, you know, some of them I may have paid, may have paid 29 bucks or something for, and they may be in the 200 plus dollar range. There's a few of them like that. There's some I've paid even less for, I think, are in the 150 to 200 dollar range. There's some I've paid like 40 to 54 that are only in the 70 to 80 dollar range. But, you know, more often than not, there's just not a lot of profit on many of them. But, as I said, if you pick the right ones, even if you get like 35, 36% good investments like really good ones you still can make a lot more money than the duds you invest in so that is one type of, of investment or you know re resale whatever you want to call it that probably shouldn't be frowned upon because we're not taking away stuff from from the market that you know real gamers are looking to get um Am I a reseller? No. I have been in the past, and this this kind of sucks because I used to find Chrono Triggers, you know, Secret of Manas, Mega Man, you know, for NES, Mega Man, and Final Fantasy, NES, SNES, and, you know, a lot of the RPGs and, you know, Koei games and stuff that were worth a little bit of money or not quite a lot of money and ended up selling you know, like all of my chrono triggers and secret of manas and everything and I did not have one for my collection which I really regret not keeping you know I would I would get into pawn shopping you know before most of the pawn shops went online on Yahoo Marketplace and eBay and Amazon and all that and and they probably knew those were options to sell, but they didn't really do it yet. They, you know, before everybody went on eBay, uh, including like all the pawn shops. So I bought um, some Sega Saturn stuff, that Super Nintendo stuff, you know, for next to nothing, Sega CDs, um, and also flea markets, yard sales. You never know what you're going to find. Um, but in the olden days and then you know the 90s and stuff you could really find a lot of stuff for cheap I mean, not everybody sold their stuff cheap some some of the stuff was outrageous for you stuff but um, but you know when eBay really caught on with with the video game market we made a ton of money off of chrono triggers and stuff but even then, you know, we were selling Chrono Triggers for like 50 bucks. And, you know, that's what they were going for on eBay. We would pay 50 cent or maybe up to like 5 bucks for it. Put it on eBay. And, uh, yeah, we would sell them pretty quickly. You know, a lot of NES games and stuff. And you could find 25, 50 cent, a dollar, 5 bucks, you know, and get... $15 to, you know, 100 bucks or whatever. <clears throat> I just quit quit reselling. I quit reselling probably way before um, way before the goods ran out at the flea markets and yard sales and all that stuff. You know, eBay takes so many fees and everything and 
you get a few bad buyers do chargebacks on you even when like eBay and PayPal side with you if they do a chargeback on their credit card it still comes back to you so if you can sell a couple big items for 500 bucks or a thousand dollars and um, people like to trade their broken stuff for your good stuff you know they would send a different like console or something back and say hey it's broken different serial number and you know that's what made so many people start recording serial numbers even though I imagine a lot of them would just change the case you know of an Atari or anything like that and hope that nobody's looking at the motherboard to see if there's a serial number that doesn't match or whatever <clears throat> so yeah I never really got an Amazon myself but yeah I was I was a gamer a collector a reseller and just kind of like an off and on physical media investor so why does collecting leave a bad taste in you know certain people's mouths mainly you know you you can be a gamer that collects or you're a bad guy that is a collector that doesn't game and you're taking your old you know out of print out of production sometimes rare and expensive games out of the market so once they're out of the market and you know you have a you know 10,000 collectors that don't sell their collection that creates kind of like an artificial um it, it makes it look like there are less in existence so if there is less of something and, and this isn't in all cases but if there's less of something and it's in demand people pay more for it you know there are rare things that don't have a lot of uh, numbers out there um, that aren't worth that much because people don't want certain stuff you know no matter how rare it is and then there are kind of like the opposite you know there you know at one time you could if you wanted snatcher for sega cd you could just go get it for 50 bucks or 70 bucks and then 250 then now it's like 800 to 1500 bucks but for so long if you really wanted that game to play or to collect you could have bought it on ebay you had your chance years and years ago if you wanted pop full mail for Sega CD, which is like, who knows, 500 bucks now, you could have got it at a swap shop for 20 bucks or $15. I used to see it. Nobody wanted that damn game at all. Nobody wanted it for years. All of a sudden, people started collecting Working Designs games, and it goes up to 70, then, you know, 80, 100, 200, you know, however much. And then it's just. Uh, who's, who wants to play through Popful Mail for 500 bucks? You know, it's not worth 500 bucks. It was, you know, I guess an okay game. I played it a little bit. But, you know, who's going to pay $500 for a game, you know, you could buy one similar for, you know, 30 or 40 bucks somewhere. So, a question would be, am I a gamer? Even if I don't game a lot in my, you know, my middle age, <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I can imagine we had video games of some sort, Atari 2600 or something, probably by 1980. I probably started playing games actively by 1982, and uh, I've been playing them on, on the TI-99 4A. Atari 2600, 7800, Television, ColecoVision, um, Vic 20. Um, of course, we didn't have a Commodore 64 at home, but I did play it at school. And I would get a Commodore 64 later on, you know, kind of after they leave the market, you know, and you can no longer find uh, Commodore 64 games and Toys R Us and stuff, but and it was still popular for a long time even after you know it went out of the the pop the market 
and I played, you know, Sega Master System games, you, you know, and Nintendo games like crazy, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis games, you know, Sega Saturn games, um, 3DO, and, um, PlayStation 1, and PS3, Xbox, you know, all the way into the current generation of games. Don't have a PS5 yet, I don't have the Series X yet, but I do have a Switch, and PS4, and the Xbox uh, One X. I played on, you know, the arcades like crazy, so... Every gas station was an arcade. Every theater was a, had an arcade. You know, we had dedicated arcades in the Oaks Mall. And there were dedicated arcades all, you know, in all the major cities. You know, when we travel and stuff. And uh, amusement parks and the fairs had their own arcades. So I spent thousands and thousands and thousands of hours playing between the Atari 2600, you know, Odyssey 2 as well, and uh, Atari 600 and 800 computers, all of them, thousands of hours playing. Um, I loved the Sega CD, the Sega Saturn, you know, I'll talk about, you know, in another video, my favorite, top favorite systems. But yes, I mean, I love RPGs, you know, some of the uh, Neo Geo fighters and CPS uh, 2 fighters and, you know, uh, some of the platformers. But, you know, mainly I'm an RPG guy, you know, Ultima, Dragon Warrior, um, a lot of those types of games, East. And this here is probably my absolute favorite Sega Dreamcast game, Egg, or, or Elemental Gimmick Gear. You know, a lot of people may not like the Dreamcast controller. That's, you know, that, that's fair. But this, this thing was kind of designed for that controller this game was. And it had, like, hand-drawn art, and which made it really, you know, cool and artistic. And I hope that one day they make a remaster of this and maybe a sequel would be awesome so yeah you can be one or every one of those things but am I a gamer I guess am I a reseller I used to be but not anymore am I a collector yes am I a physical media investor you know yes no kind of you know, not really active, but there's nothing to stop me if I don't, you know, get $10,000 in my bank account and say, okay, I'm going to go invest in some more from physical media because physical media is po probably going to go away in, in, you know, 10, 15 years, maybe sooner, maybe a little while, a little longer. You know, when, when video game consoles start coming out without disk drives, media drives, cartridge, cartridge slots, um, and there are kind of like some bare systems that have came out like that, where you have to download your games, um, I don't think it caught, has caught on, you know, fully yet, but they're moving in that direction, and you do not have to be, <clears throat> you do not have to have a hundred percent you know buy rate or whatever you know there can still be 10 15 percent 25 percent of gamers that say i still want physical media but once they get to that point you know these physical media people me or whatever will either have to stop buying games stop gaming stop collecting new you know stuff that doesn't exist or we have to move with the times and if we want to play new games we have to buy those digital copies 